on the Farm Bureau phone line. Check out favorites.com and go with the home team at Mississippi Farm Bureau. Jay Powell, former Mississippi State and big league pitcher, analyst, high school baseball coach, a little bit of everything from JP. Buddy, what is up, my friend? How are you? Uh, Richard, doing well, man. I'm actually on the road, headed back from the beach. And it sounded like I have was kind of a uh, jack of all trades, but a master of none in that introduction. Well, I don't know. You got a World Series ring. You mastered <laughs> something along the way. Uh, I guess so. But yeah, we've uh, been on the been on the coast playing baseball. So uh, now got a couple couple days off. It sounds less luxurious though when you say you've been on the coast playing baseball. When you just say, "Oh yeah, I'm coming back from the beach," you know. Yeah. Well, it's uh, you come down here for this tournament with uh, with the high school guys. It's it's pretty. It's about three games in three days, or four games in three days. So you get a lot of baseball in a short period of time. There you go. I uh, certainly uh, certainly know it's a fun time of year with uh, with it heating up everywhere. Let's talk Mississippi State for a second, and then I want to switch to some uh, some MLB stuff with you. you. You look at this Mississippi State team. And I guess at this point, Jay, the biggest storyline is the loss of Landon Sims, the loss of Stone Simmons out for the year, arm injuries, Tommy John surgery on the horizon. And you just can't help but feel so bad for those guys and hope for a full recovery. But somehow you've got to get past that being the storyline, don't you? Yeah, you do. And, and, you know, it's you're right. It's a, kind of a punch in the gut uh, for those guys. And, you know, Landon will, will still, honestly, probably be a first-rounder, and, and rightfully so. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you know, looking at this group this year, I thought that offensively I thought they had enough. Um, pitching I thought was going to be, you know, they were going to be thin, especially in the bullpen, when, when they made the move to move Landon to the, uh, to the rotation. So, now you, you factor in Stone's injury and, and Landon's, and you're pulling somebody else out of the pen for that rotation. So kind of makes an already thin bullpen even even that much thinner. And, uh, you know, I think that's so far been a little bit of the Achilles heel, Paul. A little bit of a slow start for the offense. They've been swinging it better. I mean, you even look at the game, what, on, on Monday night against Binghamton, and it's 5-5 going into the eighth inning, and then you have that offensive explosion. Binghamton helps you on the mound a little bit. You take advantage, and, you know, you end up hanging 13 runs. Are, are we going to get to the point where this offense is more consistent, where it's not they, they, they score double digits, and then they score one, and then they score four, and then they have two games with double digits? I don't know, um, and and you know you've seen it a long time too, and and that league is not very friendly for freshman hitters, yeah. and they they've got a lot of those in that lineup. I mean, you've got some key guys back, but you know you've got a true freshman in there in the third hole, and at any given time you've got a couple other ones, and then you factor in you got some, you know, some uh, portal guys and grad transfers, so it's. It's a little bit of an unknown, and, and that's what you get a lot of time with young hitters. It's just the consistency sometimes is tough, and um, I think they're going to get better. I think at the end of the year they'll be a better team than they are right now, but I think at the same time they're going to they're have to go through some ups and downs just because they're so there's, – there's going to be two to three inexperienced young hitters in that lineup every time, and, yeah. and you just that, that's what you're going to have to deal with. We saw Kellum Clark at the end of the season kind of hit his stride. It has not taken to the end of the season. I know Hunter Hines is the guy that you were referencing a second ago. Right. Man, for physically, that's that's a special-looking kid. It's 6'3", 215 as a freshman. He looks like a big leaguer, not a freshman in college. Yeah, he can swing it. And, um, you know, the same with Hunter. Sometimes he'll go out of the strike zone, but that's part of being a freshman. But he's a really, really special talent. Um, I think he's going to get a, obviously get a really good future in that for that group and um, and and in that league. And you know, you, you talk about Kellum. You know, Kellum's starting to kind of figure it out a little bit this year. And you yeah. know, I, I've I've had Kellum as a coach and a player. And the one thing I always said about Kellum was he knew the strike zone better than any young player I've ever seen. Well, beginning of the year, he was swinging at so many balls out of the zone and really uncharacteristic of him. And he seems like he's kind of gotten that back on track and a little more patient, and now he's kind of zeroing in in the strike zone, and, and Kellum's a good hitter. So he's if they're going to have any kind of offense, Kellum, you know, you know about Logan, you know about Cameron James, some of those guys, but Kellum's a guy that coming back really kind of 
think, well, he's going to have a big sophomore year. So you, you really got to kind of hang your hat a little bit on him, too, of having a good year if you go have a good season. Jay, one of the things that I love about you is if you have an opinion, you've never been afraid to hold back on it. So I'm, I'm really curious to hear what you think about some of the issues that Major League Baseball is discussing, that they were discussing as part of the, uh, the new CBA. One of those is the possibility of banning the shift. So baseball is unique. I mean, it doesn't have there, – there is no clock. You play till the game's over. You know, there's a there, – there's no rule that says you have to put players in certain spots – but the shift has changed the game, and some people say that it has changed the game to the detriment and the enjoyment of fans. So when you hear talk about the possibility of banning the shift, what's your reaction? Well, it, the, the shift hasn't changed the game. Hitter's approach has changed the game. And, look, I'm an old pitcher, and but I've still got a lot of really good friends in professional baseball. i got a lot of good friends who are hitting coaches in Major League Baseball. And it's, it's the same thing. It's just there's never an adjustment. There's never an adjustment to strikes. There's never an adjustment off the full side. So that kind of stuff has changed the game. So instead of, you know, in my opinion, if they want to put eight guys on that side, let them do it. I mean, you ought to have the freedom to be able to do stuff like that. But they just, I, I don't know, I think it's a joke. I think a lot of stuff basically baseball is doing now is a joke. Um, and, and they keep thinking, well, we want to get the younger fans. If you want to, you know, no, it's basically baseball is strikeout, strikeout, pop up, strikeout, pop up, strikeout, you know, walk, bomb, strikeout. It's, it's getting to be a boring game, and it's not because of the way the game's designed. It's because of the way the game's being played. It's and talk. Home run, yeah, it's home run or nothing. Strikeouts are through the roof, and it's not because the pitchers are need to lower the mound. It's because of the way guys are approaching hitting. So I think it's a mess. I think it's a bad mistake, and I think it's just another one of the bad decisions that Major League Baseball is doing. All right, let me give you a counterpoint just to, to see what you say because you bring a different insight when you say you talk to guys that are that are coaching, teaching big league baseball, and there's no adjustment. There are a lot of people that have said, you know, that, that, you know, in reaction to a shift, say, look, just hit it the other way. Right. But you've also got pitchers that are throwing harder consistently than they've ever thrown, which kind of makes it hard to go the opposite way, if not impossible to go to the opposite way some of the time also. Is there anything to that? Watch, watch, watch a Major League Baseball game. And when you do, you know, all right, let's just say they've shifted. And it's a left-handed okay. full hitter, right-handed pitcher. And they're all shifted full side. Watch the pitcher. They don't pitch to the shift, meaning they say, well, we're going to shift play him that way. We've got to pitch him in. Maybe pull. They still throw him away most of the time. We're trying to pitch him elevated fastballs. And he's just, you know, he's just getting on top of the plate, pulling the ball and pulling the ball. And so the pitches for them to go the other way are there. Okay. They just don't do it. You know okay. what I mean? So. And that's what's interesting to me is is they play the shift and they just they still pitch them the same way. And look, here's the deal: as a high school baseball coach, there's been certain times where, which Jerry and Ely was a prime example, and, and I coached against Ely for a long time. When he, Jerry had come up to hit, our shortstop played in the six hole, and our second baseman played on the right side of second base because I've known Jerry for so long and played against him so long. He did not hit the ball the other way in high school. So we played him to pull. Now, I'm giving him the four hole, but I'm going on what I think where he's going to hit it. And if he hits it to the right side, he beat me. So that's what, to me, you've got to do. And and why guys won't do it, it's an ego thing. I get it. I play with Rafael Palmero, and I watch them play seven guys on one side of the infield, and they just keep hitting it. They keep hitting it. They keep hitting it. And Raphael is up with 3,000 yards. But that's just that's the way it's been for however many years. And, you know, if they're going to ban it, so be it. But, I mean, I just I don't agree with it. I think you just have to be it as a player. We don't have time to get into this. So 30 seconds or less. Universal DH. You, you were mostly a National League guy, maybe exclusively a National League guy. You, you okay right. with DH across the board? 
at this point, I think so, um, because pitchers are getting to where they put no emphasis on hitting. And, you know, back when I played, we actually, you know, you find it, you hit and run, you hit some stuff. But nowadays, the way the game's played, just get rid of the pitcher hitting and get somebody else in there that's going to strike out their own run. <laughs> it's really no different than when a pitcher's there. Most of those guys are going to strike out anyway. So, uh, yep. Yep. JB.